Go. Welcome into Press Box Live. I'm Stan the Fan Charles, and I'm with Eric at, at Eric underscore Birdland. He is Eric Garfield, and once again, down in the uh, Sarasota area where he lives year-round and keeps up with a lot of comings and goings on Oriole Prospects, and we talk with him each and every Thursday, and he'll also be writing a little bit for us and uh, probably join the Glenn Clark Show once in a while. But before I chat with Eric, let me ask you a question. What company has the expertise and technology to make your home substantially more energy efficient, comfortable, or even virus-free? Well, that would be our friends at A.J. Michaels Heating and Air Conditioning in Baltimore and Annapolis at ajmichaels.com. We're also brought to you by our friends at Superbook Sports. They're the Superbook in uh, down Utah Street in Camden Yards. They're one of the most trusted names in Vegas sports books. They're here in Maryland now. If you want to open an account, they will give you a $250 match bonus on your first bet, win or lose, up to $250 by using the promo code STANCHARLES23, which I failed to put on my screen today, STANCHARLES23 or Glenn Clark 23 uh, use that to get the promo, uh, the $250 first bet bonus match, win or lose. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER to get some help. Get the start. You need to get some help. All right. We'll talk about the Costas in a little bit later on in the show. Right now, I bring in Eric Garfield and Eric Bummer news today. I'm as excited as we were on February 2nd with the addition of Corbin Burns. We now find out that not one starting pitcher, but two starting pitchers are going to start the season on the IL with uh, Kyle Bradish. It's the dreaded UCL sprain. I know you've been through physical therapy yourself from that accident you had a couple of years ago. The likelihood, it seems to me, that this is going to need TJ surgery is probably about 90%, isn't it, Eric? Uh, I'd place it pretty high, unfortunately. Maybe not 9 and 10 like you, but when you watch at least, baseball, at least 80, at least 80, right? Right. right. When okay. you hear UCL, it's that's usually the direction it has to go. So they're going to let him try to pitch through it early, and we will – We'll see what happens. It's unfortunate that during this time of optimism, we've got some some major injuries to look at. Yeah. Hey, I'm just asking your opinion because I've got mine and I just wrote it. Okay. It seems to me that Mike Elias, who is as tight lipped as they come on everything. So I wouldn't have expected him in January, the beginning of January to say, geez, we're trying to make a trade. And there's all this added pressure because Kyle Bradish might have a UCL sprain and may need Tommy John surgery. So he's going to keep that quiet from the public. Uh, I'm guessing this didn't just pop up two days ago, and they kind of knew about this as they were making the Corbin Burns trade because knowledge like this gets out. Suddenly maybe the general manager of the Brewers is asking for a fourth player involved in the deal. Okay, that's very very logical. That is kind of a shift to the Elias regime. There's no way they found out about Bradish's a starting pitcher of importance right elbow injury within the last 48 hours. I can agree yeah. with that wholeheartedly. And I am hearing that it has in initiated action on the trade front specifically for Dylan Cease in those last 48 hours. I don't, I don't want to say don't be surprised, but I know that the two organizations have reopened talks and they've somewhat intensified pretty quickly. That is pretty wild news. And yep. again, it could possibly end up being something with the Marlins or maybe a yep. team that we don't know about just yet. There's also some free agents there. With what you know about the Oriole pitching staff, are you more inclined to try and – Get the 150, 160 innings out of left-handed pitching from a combination of Means and Cole Irvin, then maybe make a trade or free agent acquisition to replace him. Uh, but Wells, in other words, if you moved Wells back to the starting rotation, 
from where we thought he was going to be, which was as yep. a setup guy, yep. you suddenly got a hole in the bullpen. It seems like it would be easier to make the trade to get an upgrade of Wells and durability, a pitcher you know you're going to get 170, 180 innings out of. Stan, that makes so much sense. I think last year was the kind of experiment to find the ideal role and usage rate for Wells and now to switch him back into a, a pattern that might not get show the best of him, just trade for someone else. Trade for someone that's a near all-star level performer like Cease with the years ahead of free agency to a large degree. That's why you build up the prospect capital. And even after some kind of headline type trades, the Orioles still have handfuls of, of guys to yeah. trade. Some of them started performing pretty well at camp today. Um, just a question. We talked about it, and obviously there'll be some repetition on these shows until the games start, minor league baseball starts being played, and we keep up to date on what players are doing at what level and all this. But let's go, let's go over again the guys internally in the organization that could somehow spring a surprise and be on the roster in some capacity. Like, let's say, for example, if Wells were still pushed over to be starter because they don't get a big trade for a Dylan Cease or a Lozardo, is Chase McDermott a guy that could possibly come up and fill a setup role? Absolutely, yes. I've got great video that, that proves it. Of the four between AAA and 40-man uh, pitchers, uh, Arm Brewster, Mc, uh, McDermott, uh, Seth Johnson, and Kate Povich, McDermott looked the best today. I've got great video up at, on Twitter, Eric underscore Birdland, of him pitching to Adley at batting lefty. And you could just see his curveball, it, it, the hitter identifies it, locks in that eye level, and then it breaks. And that's been a consistent breaking ball package. I remember I watched him pitch in the Aberdeen game last year against the Pirates high A contingent in the fifth inning, throwing 97 and had up to eight strikeouts. So he hasn't missed a beat. And of that group of four, I'm going to estimate he's the one that's most ready for a major league role, whatever it is. But Seth and, Johnson is not far behind him. And and in the case of McDermott, in the old days when the Orioles used to bring up young pitchers, it was not uncommon to have them start in the bullpen. I remember Sammy Stewart, who sent who spent most example. of his year most of his career in the bullpen. But when he came up, it was viewed as, hey, we'll have him start in the bullpen. Uh, and get his feet wet in the majors. As it worked out, he stayed there. But somebody like Dennis Martinez or Storm Ooh. Davis, they not, they didn't necessarily immediately hit the ground as starting pitchers. You have to see how they're going to physically respond to a heavy workload against the, the best offensive performers on the globe. So maybe nine outs initially, maybe six outs, like a swingman type of role where they're, they, they don't start like they did in the minors at Norfolk. But the Orioles' data team and their front office is try, is using the, this time to try to find the best role for whoever they're, they're going to utilize and have a, a, on the 40-man. I'm telling you, and I've got video to prove it, McDermott, right now it's extremely early. We're one day in, but he's emerged of that high minors group. He, he's the one that that looks the best right now. You mentioned not far behind him is Seth Johnson. Just Oof. to give people, and we don't want to put the cart before the horse, we don't know the the size of the the tear if, if in fact, uh, Kyle Bradish has a tear in his UCLA, UCL, excuse me, not UCLA, UCL, UCL. It's not uncommon to have a tear there, yep. but it could be a micro tear Yep. Uh, so we don't want to say this is 100% that he's going to get Tommy John surgery. But to give folks some some the, the sense of timing on this thing, Seth Johnson had his TJ surgery like a, about a week after the Orioles acquired him. The Orioles knew he was doing it and knew that he was going to miss the last two months of 22, all of 23, 
And like you say, he's not far behind, but he's unlikely to start in the majors on March 27th. Correct. But you're saying by mid-May, June, he could be ready to help this pitching staff in any of a multitude of roles. A, a big way to tell the difference is last year, he really was only doing PFPs and underhand tossing, and he had a different jersey on regardless of what work group he was in. This year, regular jersey with his name, stirrups and cleats. So do they that, give baseball that, that do they give baseball players like a red jersey like the back of the quarterbacks? His was like a red penny last year. So <laughs> I don't know if they were trying to make fun of him or something like that. So far from from today I haven't seen anybody dressed that way. But Johnson I've got I've got great video of him too. You can see his hand and the difference in where his hand goes, if it's a fastball package or breaking ball. And even when he shows it, when it's obvious, the hitters look extremely confused. So that is a beautiful sign. And yeah, by the middle of this season, if he's the best pitcher at Norfolk, well, guess what? He's coming up. And right now, he looks so much more advanced than I thought he would at this time last year. Yeah, just Definitely to be fair, just just to be fair to Mike Elias, we know Please. you know he made a bad trade last year in acquiring Jack Flaherty, who didn't have yeah. anything. But to have acquired for Trey Mancini, who they at that time had no intention of re-signing, to have traded him and now a year and a couple months later have McDermott and Johnson on the precipice of helping this team, that's got to be viewed as a major plus trade. Doesn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. And and now is the time that those players, it's great that they came to fruition and they continue to develop, but now we actually need them. And and it, it might be involved in like a budgetary type discussion. We don't want to go sign Jordan Montgomery. We've got McDermott at a low pay rate. We've got Seth Johnson at a, at, a, at a minimal pay rate for the next couple seasons. So if they want to go that route, at least they can. In some parts of my mind, that's not going to make up for just giving away Zach Showalter for, for, for nothing. But when you're a GM, you win some of the deals you make, you lose yeah. some of the deals you make, and you keep rolling. The Orioles, they, they are a contender. He's not made any moves that's, gonna, that's going to stop that fact. Right. And you can't treat this like fantasy baseball where you pick everybody, the smarter guys pick the pockets. You want the other team to succeed in a trade because you want them to come to the table again. If each time you pick their pocket, they're they're going to go, I don't want to deal with that guy, you know. Spoken like um, a true fantasy winner. A couple a couple other pitchers. Um how far behind would you rate Cade Povich? Uh, and Ar Anthony, Ar is it Anthony Armbruster? It is ju Justin Armbruster. Justin Armbruster. I don't know where I got Anthony from. But anyway, those two guys, they're more like midsummer type help if, they, if they're having good seasons. There are a lot of people who follow prospects who think that Povich, because of his left-handedness and his arsenal being relatively deep, is the, is the Orioles' number one future arm i don't know if i see that right now he looked so good against mullins today he did not miss a spot lefty lefty so right then my brain is like lefty special you know when when he gets up lefty specialist arm brewster looks like the same guy that he's always been very over the top very hard for righties to pick up his hand does not move a lot so his delivery and his wind up are extremely consistent if not high-level athletic, so it just depends what the Orioles want to pick. Out of those two, I'd probably be inclined to say Povich ready a little bit first, but there are metrics that make a case for, for Arm Brewster as well. Let me ask you a question, and again, you're not a GM, and you, you don't follow those. You follow prospects a lot, but you've said that you hear that the Orioles are talking with the White Sox again about yeah. Cease. Is yeah. it possible that a Povich – or a McDermott is part of the package that goes back to the White Sox, do you think? Yeah, they, they are not in the contender status. So what they're looking to do is, hey, what can my minor league system max out that's kind of close to being maxed out as it is? And there, there's a lot of people that think, yeah, Povich is skinny. 
but he's got he's lefty. He's got a deep bag. This guy can throw a hundred plus innings in the majors right now, and that might be what the White Sox want more than a big name like a Kobe or a Basayo. Hey, they've got the asset. They might want both. Yep. So it's going to be up to Elias and his team to to, to balance out that that giveaway and that re- and that return. Very very fascinating. Eric, so. um, let me let me tell people about the Costas in, and then I want to circle back and ask you about a pitcher that I heard a blurb about last year, a relief pitcher yep. at AAA. I want to talk to you about him in just a minute. But first, I want to tell you about a sure bet, the Costas Inn, located at 4100 North Point Boulevard, the phone number 410-477-1975. Incredible steam crabs there year round. Uh, you need that phone number 410 477 1975 to give them a call before you go there. Uh, you got to call a day or so in advance to make sure they've got ample supplies of crabs, meet your budget, you know, what they're going to cost for what size. Uh, so that's the way you have to handle that at the cost of sin. But if you can't get crabs there and you still want crab cakes, always delicious uh, crab cakes there, broiled or fried, uh, great crab cakes there. And the nightly specials on the weeknights, Monday through Friday, sensational and uh, really don't hurt your wallet too much. The Costa Sin, they are also one of the uh, group of places that you can get Goose Flights uh, Lager. Uh, in honor of Tony Siragusa and a dollar ninety eight of every can sold, and at the Costa Inn you can get get it by the can. Other places like Glory Days Grill, um, uh, the uh, Guilford Hall Brewing Company, and also um, Glory Days Grill, you can buy six packs at some of those places. And the wine source you definitely can, and Alonzo's also has it. Uh, but a dollar ninety eight goes to uh, the mission of goose flights, which is to fly people non-critical but important medical transportation to get to where they need to get the medical treatment they need. A dollar ninety-eight out of every can of goose flights and Costas in has it. Forty-one hundred North Point Boulevard. All right, back to Eric uh, Garfield, uh, and he is at Eric underscore Birdland, where you can. Uh, look up his video every day on Twitter. You were telling me that just in the last 24 to 36 hours, you got like 300 ads. In other words, people have added you on based on this video you're shooting. There's a lot of Oriole fans that are interested in the prospects. That makes me so happy. And I'm giving back to them. Batting practice videos of all the name guys, Norby, Jackson Holiday was outstanding today. Kobe Mayo, Kowser, every single prospect that you can think of that's on the field. I had my camcorder right behind them and the Orioles and their PR staff and their professional photography staff. You know, there's enough room for, for everybody to see something. So it really, you know, it's one of the reasons that I do this. I get the footage and I give it right to Oriole fans. If I was in Baltimore and couldn't get down here, I'd be waiting for somebody to do that. So I encourage people to to check it all out. It's all it's all free. You don't have to follow me to see it, but it's 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 there for you, including the pictures we're talking about right now. Now, quick question: um, Just in the couple of years you've been doing this, because you started out as kind of like just an amateur going out and ob- observing what you observed and telling me about it, and others you shared. You worked worked a couple times for Orioles Hangout. Yep. You did something, I think, with. Uh, uh, what was it? The Camden Utah Street Report. Yeah, the the Utah yep. Street Report. So much fun. You're doing some stuff with us now. But yep. what would you say? In other words, can you tell already how the the media is starting to be focused on these prospects? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, so all the players that I just named, including uh, including Tyler Nevin, and including the the new guy, uh, Peyton Burdick. They were all on one cage, and I was focused on them, but so were the fans, and so were a large percentage of the media. The other one had Mountcastle, Austin Hayes, uh, a little bit of Mullins, and some other established veterans. There were less eyes on them even during day one than there were on 
Mayo and Kowser and Kerstead. And that's that's what I like. And I, I you know, I'm not going to take credit for it, but I've been one of the people over the years encouraging Oriole fans, look at these youngsters. The impact that they're going to make is monumental. It's taken till now, but they've started to believe me. And the media representation is is almost the yeah. same way. All the reporters, all the name guys from from all the networks were all there looking at the prospects today. Yeah, they're all they're all riding the wave and part of the wave you created, I'll tell you. Yep. Because uh, you've been like telling it. me you've been telling me about I've followed it from afar up here and look at the numbers, but you've been seeing these players up close and personal. I want to talk to you about a right-handed pitcher. The yep. Orioles a lot of people think they signed Felix Bautista, you know, they were the original team that signed him. They were able, Dan Duquette picked him up from the Marlins. Uh, I don't recall what team Wanderson Charles was with. I think it was a National League team. I'm not sure. So do I. But, but he's a big guy. Yep, uh, I'm not good. saying he looks exactly like the mountain, uh, Felix Bautista, but he's a big guy. And I started hearing chirps that late in the season – he might have been able to come up and help the team. Is that just a, a wishful thinking, or is there something to this guy a little bit? No, I've seen him actually in person. They used him a couple times at exhibition-type games at Twin Lakes against minor leaguers last year. He does not have a deep arsenal. I think it's just a, a different iterations of fastball, but it's really fast. This guy's off-speed is 97 and his top speed is 101 there's not a lot of variance in that window but there's a lot of heat he's in great shape and he can throw this pitch after pitch after pitch so he's not a name that we really discuss all the time but he might be a lot closer to a setup type than, than we realize i just have a feeling watching him that where he is now and where he was last year is above that triple a level of performance. So the next logical step is MLB bullpen. I yeah. don't have great video of him in action other than just, just warming up. But as the weeks go by and he gets used in game situations, we'll, we'll be able to tell. I mean, if he, if he has a great spring training and he's hard to hit, that's a very, very easy call. He yeah. throws hard. And you see him as somebody that might be able to come in the full, the fifth or sixth inning or something maybe hold a lead for an inning and a half or keep a game where we're behind by a run for an inning and a half or two innings. Uh, not You don't see him in a late inning leverage situations. And, and not immediately, but he doesn't have the stuff that like a Yeni or Cano does. Maybe it could be brought about and there he is in the peak phase of his career. But for right now, like you just described, a, a semi-trusted swing man. Yeah, we need you in this part of the game. Next time we need you at a, a little later stage of the game, can you be effective in both? So, again, I think he's a lot closer to that. I would not say that if I hadn't seen him in, in, in person before. So I think he's a lot closer to an actual role than people realize. And if not, maybe he's included in a trade. People around the league know, know that he throws really, really hard. Um. Brittany Giroli with The Athletic, she used to cover uh, the Orioles for MLB.com. I don't know if you know her at all or not, but she wrote a piece for The Athletic a couple days ago about this spate of young players that are impacting major league lineups over the course of the last couple seasons. Great topic. Uh, and, and she's predicting it's going to not only increase, it, I mean, it's going to increase uh, at a fairly a substantial rate. Talk totally a lot agree. about how the these younger players, they're they're much more fungible in taking in analytics and everything and understanding what people are trying to get them to do to improve. Somebody like Jackson Holiday, he's taking advantage of what they're teaching him, right? It's not so much things about his swing, it's approach related, isn't it? Stan, he is so much closer to being a superstar than I, I than I thought just a couple weeks ago. He's not much bigger or thicker than I thought he would be, but it's what he does with the ball. It's where it goes. Today, he definitely led every BP group in home runs, and he's not even close to the biggest guy. And 
he took the most pitches in BP. So, yeah, the ones he swings at are the ones he can drive and get extra base hits where other people have to struggle. So, yeah, that's that's approach. And, and on that topic of young players helping major league teams, I totally a- a- agree with that point. I did not think there really was a chance that he'd break camp and they'd start his clock this April. One day, four BP sessions that I have, all, all of it is up for everybody to see, changed my mind. I do believe that he will be breaking camp with the Orioles. He's just too good not to. Even if he's not 100% physically prepared, he's right. got that mental ability, like you said, that approach where he can help a major league team. Amazing. Do you saw so today there was no inner squad games or anything like that. So you only saw players hit. You have a sense, you think it's second base where he'll be, correct? Yep. And I also put up video yesterday of him working with coaches and having a first baseman. I mean, he is he's a great shortstop, but it is it really that hard to do those same things a couple feet over and yeah. you know, with your feet angled a little bit different. He proves that it's not. I mean, he gets to everything, and he's got a good enough arm. The The coolest plays are just the tosses from his fielding position to second base. Sometimes he doesn't use his hand. Sometimes it's right out of his glove. He's a kid, and he looks like he's practicing before an all-star game. So, yeah. And, and today there there was uh, actual live BPs, a couple pitchers versus hitters. So there was a, it wasn't a full scrimmage, but there was a little a little bit of both. How, uh, Kowser and Hurst, Kerstat were there today. Yep, and I got some metrics from Kowser. You know, I've got video of it so everybody can watch it. I found out he hit two over 110 miles an hour today off of uh, FCL manager Christian Frias's batting practice offering. So his swing, it's it's tinkered a little tiny bit, but the results are better immediately. We're gonna give we're gonna credit the Orioles system and their offensive coaches for that. Kowser swing looks outstanding. You don't have to listen to me say it a million times. Just go go watch for yourself. And how about Kerstad? How did he look? Okay, Kerstad's showing great bat speed, but not the type of contact that the Norby and and and, and the Kowsers and the uh Westbergs ha- have put up so far. But his swing looks the fastest through the zone. Most of his contact today. I didn't post it because it went oppo. So he's lefty hitting towards towards left field. He might be that kind of athlete that it's going to level off and, and be pull side the more swings, the more reps he gets. Eric, one last question for you. I know we talked about a player that needs a reset this year, Kyle Stowers. Yep. Is he seen at the ballpark at Ed Smith today, or is yep. he going to be at Twin Lakes? No, the the he was at he was actually kind of like the leader of the outfield group, which makes sense. He's already twenty six. He's kind of yeah. like the oldest. He looked great. I've got video of him too. You know, it's it's the same it's the same thing with the same issue. His percentage of overall contact it just needs to stay at average. If it does, he's going to whack it. He's going to extra base hit pull side at, at, at a fair enough rate. If he doesn't. If it's swing and miss and that's what's piling up, then he might not be of value to the Orioles or he might not be a valuable to a value to, to, to other clubs in trade. So it's he 26 and we're still trying to figure it out. He seems like the comp I would say that I've seen before is a little like Jock Peterson of the okay. uh, now that he's going to be. Is he back with the he's with the Diamondbacks this year? He started yep. with the Dodgers. Yep. He's played for about five teams, but Makes when he makes contact, it goes for a ride, but Stowers not enough contact yet yep. at the major league level. All right. I think I think that's a great comparison. Jock would be best case scenario for someone like Kyle. Great. That's an excellent comparison. All right. Eric, it's great talking to you as always. Uh I'll Thank be you. down the fifth of March, but you and I will have, I think, one more session before then next Thursday. All right. Yep, that sounds good. You can bring Costas in food to me because we don't have the same type of crab cakes in Sarasota. So if the airplane will let you, I promise I'll I'll eat them when you get here. The airplane would let me. My budget wouldn't let me. So okay, but uh, but maybe I can work something out. 
All right. Okay. Again, that's Eric Garfield. He is Eric at Eric underscore Birdland. That's his X account, formerly Twitter. Uh, he's with us each and every week uh, on uh, PressBoxOnline.com with me. Again, we've been brought to you by AJ Michaels Heating and Air Conditioning, SuperbookSports.com. Again, with their $250, $250 first bet bonus match, win or lose, if you start an account with SuperbookSports.com. And also, uh, we've been brought to you by the aforementioned Costison with great, great crab cakes. Uh, that's it for today. I'll be back with uh, Luke and Ross on Monday and then Eric next Thursday. And I'll be in with, Eric, uh, with, uh, I'll be in with Glenn Clark on Friday. That's it for now. Thanks, guys. Bye.